In this laboratory, we will be exploring the relationship between weight and the force of friction. Friction is what gives car tires traction. Does the traction a car gets, does the friction available to the tires vary with the amount of weight that is in the vehicle? Does more weight produce more traction through more friction with the tires? If a pickup truck is empty or fully loaded, does that change the amount of traction one gets, the amount of friction that is generated? That's what this lab looks at. This is a simplified system that will use sandpaper as the surface and a glass sled weighing in at 446 grams to slide on the actual sandpaper. I'll be starting with an empty sled as seen here and pulling it across the sandpaper. I want to get the force of friction as the glass sled is moving at a steady pace. You will see that the glass sled sometimes sticks and then jumps. That's because there's really two types of friction here. There is static friction, which is a friction of something sitting still, and sliding friction, the friction with that occurs when something is moving at a steady rate. I am gradually increasing the weight in the sled. You can see in the images, each time I've added more marbles, measured the weight, and I'm getting a new measurement for the force. The force is going up. Now I'm recording this on a sheet of paper on the side. It's hard to see in here. I'm up to 712 grams. So don't worry about the sticking part. What I want is a steady, smooth motion. And I'm reading the gram force on the blue scale when I get that steady motion. I'm up to 816 grams uh, at this point. And I'm pulling at a steady rate, and I'm reading the blue spring scale to see how much force it took to pull those. With increased numbers of marbles, the force also increases. And so I'm getting more and more force as, it, uh, as the mass of the marbles increases inside the container. I'm up to 1,009 grams now, and you can see the sliding effect here. Here you can see the data that I've gathered. The mass is in the first column and the force used to pull that mass is in the second column. I'll now move that data over to Desmos. Here I'm in Desmos and I'll set up a table. I'm going to change my variables to match those that were in that table. The first column, I'm going to set that to be M1 for the mass that was in the uh, bucket there, the sled plus the marbles. And the second column I'll set to be F1 for the force of friction. Now, the mass is being measured in grams, and the force of friction is also being measured in grams, but in a force known as a gram force, technically. That is, it is the force that one gram exerts on the ground at the surface of the Earth. So it's called a gram force, but it does let me measure in grams both the force and the mass, which is technically also being measured as a force by my mass balance. You can see that the force to pull the sled and the marbles is always less than the mass of the marbles in the, uh, in the bucket, uh, noting too that that mass includes the mass of the sled. Here I'm setting up my axes using the wrench tool. I'm setting the x-axis to run from 0 to 10.09, the uh, minimum to maximum for the x-axis. The y-axis, I'm setting it to run from 0 to 215, which is the minimum to the maximum. Now I'm actually setting up the uh, x-axis label. A little difficult to see when in uh, uh, landscape mode, but I'm working in landscape mode here and the y-axis I'm also adding a label to that so I've got the labels done you'll probably find it easier to work in portrait mode than in landscape mode 
Now I can see that the points actually have formed a fairly straight line. Yes, some of the points aren't exactly in a line, but this suggests that the correct model is going to be a linear equation. And so I'll be working on that linear equation now. The second column is my y-axis variable, so that's my force, F1. The force is approximately equal to, that's a tilde. You'll notice I had to go to the alphabetic keyboard to get the tilde. K1 is an arbitrary constant for the slope. I don't want to use M for the slope as you do in algebra because I already used M for the mass. So that would get confusing and it wouldn't work. So I've set K as my slope and M1 are the variables M1. And I've got a line that runs right through the points and uh, uh, has a slope. Now you might, there's that question of whether or not that Y intercept is indeed actually exactly zero. But I can have a look at what the y-intercept might be by adding in a y-intercept, just b1 for the y-intercept, and seeing if that has any appreciable effect on the constant. And it doesn't have a large effect. They only get 8.5. That measurement is 8.5 grams. That's basically the mass of a marble, a tiny bit more, but it's very small. It's insignificantly small. And so I'm going to go ahead and delete the b1 because it does not make a significant difference in my mathematical model. This model looks like the intercept is supposed to be zero. Or put another way, when there is no mass, there is no force to pull the object. An object with no mass will require no force in order to keep it moving. So that's a kind of logical result from the model. No mass, no force. And so I'll leave it without that. So with this, you can see I'm going to save my graph so I can come back to it later. I'll also do some screenshots. I'll screenshot the uh, table. I'll screenshot the graph. And I'll screenshot the analysis to put those into my laboratory report. Here I'm just giving it a name so I can go back and find this uh, file again in the future. So the relationship appears to be a linear relationship. And that value of about roughly 0.215, what that's telling me is that the force of friction is something on the order of roughly 20, 21% of the mass. As the mass goes up, the force goes up proportionately. So that's a in a sense, an interesting result. Here's my screenshots that I've pulled out. And then I'm going to work in my document to put these in. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in the data table. I've done a screenshot of it already. So I'll pull that into here. And I'll go pull that up and insert it. You can do the same thing. Always add a caption to your table. I'm going to add a caption for the mass, M1. I can't easily get a subscript from here. There's a way to do it, but it's sufficiently complicated that you don't need to worry about it. What I'd have to do is insert that from a website that could give me the Unicode subscript 1. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that in this case. Now, I notice that these two lines are fairly separated from each other. I'll go back and fix that in a moment. What's happening here is that I'm working in heading level 2. and I'll have to shift this back to normal text. This should just be normal text. You can watch for these things too when you're working on a document and determine whether or not you need to make a format change. So I've selected it, and I'll go up to the Format menu where I can see it's in Heading 2, and I'll scroll up to put it in Normal Text. Now those lines will come back together. With that done, I can now insert the data graph.
You might note I had to scroll down slightly to get that menu to appear that lets me insert the graph, something you've probably run into already by this point in the term. The analysis I did as a screenshot also, so I'll pick that off and I'll insert that. But I also did a copy of that uh, constant just so I'd get the value right. And so I'm actually going to paste that in. Uh, although I initially pasted it in here, it really belongs up in the numeric analysis. So I'll go ahead and select that, cut it, and paste it up into the numeric analysis. That constant K1, the 0.215 value, is the coefficient of kinetic friction. It's telling me that no matter what the weight is, the force to pull that sled across that sandpaper will be... 21.5% of the mass of the sled and the marbles, or 0.215 times the mass. So this tells me that friction increases linearly with mass. And this then answers the uh, question implicitly posed at the beginning of this video. More mass in the back of a pickup truck can produce more friction between the tires and the ground. And in the language of cars and automobiles, we speak of traction. Traction represents uh, a counterpart to friction, if you will. If there's a lot of friction, there's a lot of traction. So more weight in the back of a pickup truck, especially if it's a rear-wheel drive pickup truck, can help give that truck more traction in other words, produces more friction. And indeed, we know this. If a pickup truck is stuck somewhere, we put more weight in the back to help get it out. When you do your report, make sure you include a discussion and conclusions. I've talked about some of the conclusions to be reached. That is, that there is this coefficient of friction that the system responds in a linear fashion. Put that in a discussion. Write it up in complete sentences, paragraph form. If you actually did the experiment in the laboratory, you can also talk about sources of error because you will have seen firsthand the things that can go wrong with the experiment. Sources of error are always a good thing to include in a discussion. What might have gone wrong? And uh, get that fleshed out and then you can submit this as your report, whether you're using the online data or using data that you might have gathered in the classroom. But always give a good conclusion for the reader to tell them what happened.